tells you what to do. Come on. It's understood what you are not to do. We got some fucking religion that like to challenge God's word by saying, well, he didn't say I couldn't do it. He didn't say I shall not do this, that, or the other. But we learn in dealing with God that when God tells you what to do, it's understood what you are not to do. Amen. Notice God says, take the rock. Now he's supposed to have the rock. Y'all seeing this? Mm -hmm. He's supposed to have the rock. But he is not to use the rock as a means of getting the water. Mm -hmm. He says, take the rod, gather up the assembly, you and Aaron, your brother, and then speak unto the rock before the eyes. It shall give forth water. Thou shalt bring them forth water out of the rock. Thou shalt give the congregation and their beasts to drink. Moses obviously fed up with the people. Mm -hmm. Moses has received the commandment of God. Whenever you understand what God wants you to do, right. don't you ever take an initiative to do what you want to do. Right. He got the rod. Yes, and he got the rod for the wrong reason. Mm -hmm. See, some folk may have the sword of the spirit, which is the body. Mm -hmm. But everybody ain't using it for the right reason. Moses takes the rod and watch what happens here. He, he, he gets before the congregation, gathers them, verse 10, together before the rock. And he said to them, Hear now, ye rebels. He's a little upset with me. Calls them out their name. Amen. Calls them, they are rebellion, true enough. But Moses, just do what God told you to do. God can tell you to gather up the folk and then go to fussing at them. God told you get them together. God, matter of fact, God can tell you to send nothing to them. He said, get them together and you talk to the rock. Here right. it is, Moses. He, he ain't talking to the rock. He talking to the people. And whenever you do the opposite of what God tells you to do, you're going to mess up every time. Uh -huh. Here now, you rebels. <laughs> well, they white rebels. It went up to him to call them that. Amen. Brothers and sisters, while I'm passing through this, this very uh, fertile land, uh -huh. yeah, I, I, I thought I ought to tell you, you ain't got to say everything yes, that comes to your mind. Yeah. Amen. In heaven. Sometimes things are better left unsaid. You follow me? Don't let it come up and out and out. Because even Jesus teaches us in Matthew chapter 12 that every idle word yes. that a man shall speak, mm -hmm. he's going to give an account thereof in the day of judgment. Yes. God told Moses, talk to the rock. Moses is talking to the people. Hear now, you rebels. Must we fetch you all out of this rock? Moses, you messed up right there. But I don't care what you said to the rock. I don't care what you do to the rock. It ain't you that's giving water out to the rock. Amen. Moses said, must we catch you water? Must him and Aaron do this for you? And instead of speaking to the rock, the Bible says in verse number 11, he lifted up his hand with his rod and smote the rock twice. Hit the, didn't tell the rock to do nothing. Just turn off and hit the rock two times. Taking out his frustration on the rock. Mm -hmm. see this? Mm -hmm. And it was because of that that Moses missed the promised land. The Bible says in verse 12, And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron and says, Because ye believe me not to sanctify me, in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore, ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. 
that two observations we can make from this very account. First of all, in the work of the Lord, yes. he must come first. He must. Look with me at Matthew chapter 24. Mm -hmm. Beginning at verse number 44. In the work of the Lord, he must come first. Yes, sir. In other words, it doesn't matter what you do or how well you do it, mm -hmm. how often you do it. Yes, sir. When you're doing it in the name of the Lord, it's the Lord's work. And the Lord must come first. Which means you ought not do anything for the Lord looking for some type of accolades or praise for yourself. You're merely a servant. And a servant's priority is to serve. Y'all see this? Yes, Don't look at me like that. I got it right here. Matthew chapter 24, beginning at verse number 44. He says, Therefore, be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant? Whom the Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season. Listen to the question that Jesus asked. Who is a faithful and wise servant who the master is going to reward? We have a lot of us that want the reward, but we don't want to serve. Yes. Amen. How devilish it is of you to want a reward for nothing. Hello in here. And that's how envy and jealousy starts to creep into the work of the Lord. Because there's some folk who don't mind working. And they're working because their passion is the work. They're working because they understand they are a servant. And a servant gets his greatest joy from service. He ain't looking for nothing. He ain't expecting nothing. He don't want nothing but just to serve. And that's the reason he or she is so good at it. It's not because they're trying to be singing. It's because the joy of the Lord to them comes from serving the Lord. Some folk won't be reward. They don't want to serve. The Lord asked the question, who is it? There's a faithful and wise servant. We're going to let the Lord answer his own question. All right. Verse 46 says, Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Mm -hmm. This ain't the place. Mm -hmm. You just sit up here and look pretty. Mm -hmm. This ain't the place. For you to show off how much you paid for your outfit. This ain't the place to show us how many electronic trolls you got inside your car and how you can make the doors open without even using it. This ain't the place for you to sit back and want to be served. This is the place that you can serve the Lord freely, openly. And diligently, and the Lord Himself said, The faithful and wise servant is the one when I come back, I'm gonna find him working. Y'all see that? But see, the other fellow gonna be caught off guard. Because, see, we got some that will work as long as folks are watching. Uh -huh. As long as there's somebody to pat us on the back. Right. As long as there's somebody to put our name in the book. Right. As long as there's somebody to announce from the pulpit, I'm the one hung these chandeliers, and I'm the one to turn the blinds inside out. As long as there's somebody to do that, they'll go ahead and do it. Right. And when you don't mention their name, they don't do nothing else. Right. They hear it for the wrong reason. Yes, now watch what the Lord says happens to that kind of fellow. He says, verse 48, but if that evil servant shall say in his heart, the Lord delayeth his coming and shall begin to smite his fellow servants and to eat and to drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him and in an hour in which he is not aware of and shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. 